morning, Facebook. This is Jim Blythe, U.S. Navy veteran. We're here with the Veterans Impact Show. Joining me this morning, Dr. Stephen Holt, the director of the VA. Across America, you're listening to the Veterans Impact Show, featuring stories of veterans who continue the mission in their communities with honor, courage, and commitment. Brought to you by Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Well, good day and welcome to the Veterans Impact Show. I'm Jim Blythe, U.S. Navy veteran. Joining me from the other side of the world of Air Force, Colonel Bird Colonel, retired U.S. Air Force medical doctor, director of the North Texas VA, and a great friend, one of the most dedicated men I've ever met in my life. Dr. Holt, welcome aboard. Thanks for having me back. It's always a pleasure because we get so much. So today we're going to be talking about veterans, the VA healthcare system, your director of North Texas, which is the second largest in the United States. It's also one of, I think one of the most innovative is I've been working with you guys in what you do. So the first thing we want to start off with, the brand new news you can use, the new veterans suicide hotline number is 988. It's not the normal phone number that still works but it's 988 yeah so based on the experience that they had in Great Britain with this type of thing the VA has moved and it took about a year because everything that seems simple isn't so 988 is a much easier um, number to remember it's the highest number on your your little phone digital thing followed by hitting the second highest number twice 988 and then hit option one once you're connected the old suicide uh, a crisis line will stay working too, but that number is harder to remember. So we went to 988, and we've seen a significant increase in the volume of calls. Ultimately, we expect to see about 150% increase because it's just easier for people it, to access this. It's so much better. I have a personal friend who actually is one of the people who takes those calls. And they do, they're so well trained and they do a tremendous job. So if you have yourself, you're having troubles, you're, you're dealing with stuff that you can't deal with. If you're the spouse of a veteran, if you're a family member of a veteran and they need help, remember 988. And that's news you can really use. Now, we can talk about something that's not quite enacted yet, but is going to be, which is the PACT Act. And we were talking ab about this for several weeks now. So, Dr. Holt, Tell us a little bit about what is the PACT Act and what is that designed to do? Because it is the largest piece of legislation that's come up for veterans health care. Isn't that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And this is going to be a tremendous expansion of enrollment for veterans health care. Um, a huge initiative. It was brought into um, existence to honor uh, Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson, who uh, returned from two deployments in the, uh, the Afghanistan, Iraq area, developed an unusual type of lymphoma and, and died, unfortunately. And so this brought to a head that there are some significant exposure risks associated with deployments. And hence, this, this act is named after him. It is the honoring our promise to address comprehensive toxins, or PACT Act. It, we were hoping it would have been signed into law yesterday, but there was a little bit of last minute details that Congress wanted to, to change. So it's going to get amended, or it's going to get changed, revised. It won't be signed into law until September because, as you know, Congress went into recess at the end of the day yesterday. But this is expected to be probably one of the first pieces, if not the first piece of legislation that they finalize when they come back in September. Now, doesn't this go back to some of the problems we had with Agent Orange? And so what happened was there was so much with Agent Orange for a long period of time. Now, what Congress has done in working with the VA to create the PACT Act, you're getting ahead of the curve. So part of what you're doing is a research registry. Would that be an, an accurate way to call it? Exactly. So there are a whole bunch of registries in the VA. And what a register the registry does is allow us, you see, we can't use your individual medical data without your permission, okay, to do research. So when you go in the registry, you're allowing us to use your data, not identify to you. It's always never, the data is not identified to the individual, but now we can look at this cohort of people and look for emerging health trends that we might not otherwise have seen. 
and a lot of these are subtle. It takes a large number of people and a number of years, hence why Agent Orange, you know, we were studying that back in the 80s with uh, the Ranch Ham study in the Air Force, but it took a very long time to see statistically significant patterns of disease emergence. Now, the neat thing is with the PAC Act and some other things, we're going to be ahead of that curve, and if we think it's reasonable, if the Secretary of the VA thinks it's a reasonable association and science has improved it, they're going to go ahead and start evaluating people for those diseases, not wait for the science, which can take years, many, many people in years, to have enough um, cases to say that, you know, statistically, this appears to be something caused by exposure to something. Okay, this came out of the burn, well, originally goes way back to Agent Orange, but it came out because of um, Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson of burn pit, which were used in Iraq and Afghanistan. They're also been used in the United States. They're in Camp Lejeune. This relates to, though, any and all topics e exposure. And I think one of the things that's so amazing about this is you're trying to go in and say, okay, here are things that we can identify. This veteran was there. This veteran may be in a, exposed to this. And if he comes in to care health care, to get health care, we can start looking ahead of the, the curve. We can do more to make sure they have better health care. Yeah, and that's exactly what it's about. We're taking the lessons we've learned with Agent Orange and the changes in the laws that allows the secretary to establish presumptives. A presumptive is if you were in this place during this time frame, then we presume you were exposed. You don't have to go prove it. You don't have to say, oh, you know, my tent was right next to the burn pit. If you were in that theater area, and, and there's a lot of theater areas, not just Afghanistan and uh, Iraq, that are covered by the PACT Act. If you were in that area, we presume you were exposed. Let's move forward. Let's not waste time. Let's not frustrate our fellow veterans, et cetera, by making them prove something. We'll just presume it and move on. And the secretary has the powers now to do that. So what we're talking about are some diseases such as cancer, uh, liver failure, COPD, possibly anything respiratory. But it, with Agent Orange, we know it also created a lot of cancer, different kinds of cancers. So getting ahead of it, being able to treat that's amazing. I'm going to go do it. Let me tell you, uh, they enacted the Blue Water legislation. And I was on uh, Yes, and I was on aircraft carriers in the Gulf of Tonkin. Did not come into any kind of proximity to Agent Orange. But one of the things is I want to get into the registry, and I want my fellow brothers that were on aircraft carriers because we were dealing with a lot of toxic substances. And I worked the flight deck uh, many, many times. And, boy, let me tell you something. You talk about breathing jet fuel, you know, jet exhaust, that's just part of it. So that, that's an interesting example. So, you know, many years ago when I used to fly, um, we went from JP-4 to JP-8 mm -hmm. simply because JP-8 was a safer fuel from a health perspective. So we made that change. Um, and again, you know, when you go back to Agent Orange, they made this so easy that all you had to do is show you were on the ground in Vietnam, the original, for one day. That's all you had to show in your DD-214 uh, is you've been there and you were presumed exposed. And the same is true of Afghanistan and all. And so one of the things is, how do you go about registering for this? Has this been set up yet where I can just go online? And, and actually, the burn pit registry was established in two, 2014, which I didn't realize. So I started actually looking into this. And, and let me back up one second and say, based on the OIG report that was recently released looking at this, we're figuring about three, and, this affects about three and a half million service people and veterans, three and a half million. So the way you go is you go online, you need a special level two access, you have to establish an account, and then you can fill out the registry, exam, the registry questionnaire and you get into the registry. The advantage of the registry is we will be notifying you when things come up. Again, we can monitor your health uh, which we wouldn't do if you're just in the VA, you're just in the VA. We're not monitoring your health for cancer that's associated to this. 
in the registry when we see that we'll be monitoring it and then we can say hey you know you need you need to think about increasing your claim because this has happened it's associated with that um kind of lost my train of thought there which is not unusual. <laughs> <laughs> well it's easy to do because we get we we have so many wonderful rabbit holes to go down nathaniel is doing a great job he's our engineer and he's pulled up for our audience on Facebook and YouTube. And again, you can go to the registry eligibility. You can go to this VA Airborne Hazards and Operation. This is the burn pit registry. He's got it there, and you can go and get this. This is important to know because it can save your life. Now, let me, let me kind of take a sidebar. In the civilian world, we don't have anything like this. This isn't no. going on, and yet in the civilian world, there are many, many people who get exposed to many more toxic things in manufacturing plants, in shipping when a, you know maybe containers get open. Various things come up, and the military is leading the way. The VA and the, the Congress and the Veterans Administration Healthcare is leading the way because this is important. We find all kinds of toxic substances throughout the world, much less here in the United States and in the military. So this is not necessarily a military only type situation. You could run into this as a civilian. And this takes the, the direct link to take us down the path for that. Because the VA, what most people don't understand, the VA has led United States healthcare many, many, many times. And a lot of people don't realize the importance of that. No, no, you're absolutely right. And as you came back to the private sector, um, they don't look as intensively. In the military, one, we need to preserve the military force because it's very hard to recruit. You know, less than one in four high school graduates are qualified, physically able to meet the standards to even join the military. And it's a very competitive market. It certainly is right now for these people who are healthy, able, you know, smart. So we need to preserve the fighting force as best we can. And so the military puts a great deal of uh, looking into the hazards and mitigating the hazards and monitoring the health of people where we know there are hazards. Now, the problem is when you deploy, it's different than being in garrison. We have very good tight control of what happens in garrison. Okay, but when you get into deployment, as many of us deployed know, sometimes <laughs> the rule books go away and we kind of just do things differently, don't we? We do what we got to do. You got to adapt, you, you do what you got to do to get the mission to continue. And so that have things happen. Just, but it's the same thing in the civilian world. And I think it's really, really important that we let people know we are working on this. You were in the military, you were anywhere in this, in the region countries, if you were in the Navy and you were at the fleet, if you were in the fifth, fifth fleet, yeah, no. seventh fleet, um, I think one of the other things is the signing up for the registry will not adversely affect any future disability claims. Yeah, it absolutely cannot. And again, there are a lot of registries, and there's another one I'll encourage you to. It's called the Million Vet Program, which I'm signed up for, where we look, we're using that again. We can't use your health data to do studies without your permission. So when you enter one of these registries, you're giving permission. Always when we do those studies, we de-identify whose data it is when we put in the large aggregates of information. And usually as a product of this registry, if we do a, stu or a study, we're going to let you know the results when we have it ready to publish as well. So there are two I would recommend. If you've been to one of these countries during the time frames um, for the burn pit, please register. Because again, it takes many people and a lot of study to find these. Need, yeah, we and need, we need that it. information. And and the other is the multi the million vet program. I really urge you to sign up for that one too. I'm signed up for that one. So, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a break to hear from our partners who will help finance this. It's important that you come back with us because we got Dr. Stephen Holt, the director of the North Texas VA. You are also doing some work with the Vision 17, which is over the state of Texas, and that's incredible. Your dedication, unbelievable. You are a man who the mission continues, and that's the whole point 
of the Veterans Impact Show is continuing the mission. So please continue to listen to us. We'll be right back with you in just a moment. This is the Veterans Impact Show, and I'm Jim Blythe with Dr. Stephen Holt. We'll be right back. Facebook, stay with us. We're having we're having a lot of fun. Don't leave. <laughs> One of the things that that and when I started talking about this, about how the VA has led the way, you really have in a lot of innovative medicine. And most people don't know, Doctor Holt, that seventy percent of your medical professionals in the United States, at one point or time and another, have served in the VA. Um, in internships or training, whatever. It's amazing. Yeah, we are the powerhouse of graduate level medical education and in terms of presenting the clinical uh, access to, to patients and clinical training. I think one of the things, too, is the partnerships you guys have got. Um, you are partnered with UT Southwestern here in Dallas, which is one of the leading medical schools in the world. Houston is partnered with MD Anderson. I talked with their mm -hmm. PAO and their people down there. And so you have this partnerships around the world, or yep. especially in the United States. I think uh, Massachusetts is partnered with one of the biggest one up, up there in Boston. So that's one of the foundations of how the VA operates. For many, many years, it was always operated with a, a relationship with an affiliate if one was available. Now we have some small facilities where there isn't. But yeah, UT Southwestern, Baylor Scott and Boyd, um, Harrison Methodist, these are all, you know, just for physician training that we have uh, partnerships. And then for nursing, it's huge, the number of nursing schools, for instance, and then all the other allied health, um, you know, the, I want to say the Texas School of Pharmacy is actually on the campus of the VA uh, Dallas campus, so. Oh, that that is very important. The other thing is when we come back to our radio audience, I want to talk about accessibility, how easy it is by comparison to get signed up, but where you've got care. Most people think, oh, I would have to go to the big VA hospital down in Lancaster. You now have clinics all over the state of Texas, correct? Yes. Yeah. And, you know, because the goal is we need to be basically within a 30 minute drive. You need a primary care clinic within a 30 minute drive of the veteran. But even if you live on a ranch out in the middle of West Texas, we've got telehealth services. And yeah. so when we come back, we're going to be talking about that and all of the services that are provided to a veteran. These things are incredibly important because what we do to take care of veterans, take care of our own, really then permeates our own culture and our own country throughout. So we're going to be right back in just a minute or two. Are some other things that, that we can talk about with our Facebook audience or we can come back and that you'd like to focus on? Uh, yeah, well, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the burn. I'd like to talk okay. about e uh, a recent um, court decision on ER right. visits reimbursement. I think that's key for our veterans to understand that and then reemphasize the urgent care benefit. All right, so we're going to be coming back in just a second. Facebook, thank you for being with us. Share us. Uh, go to YouTube. Sign up with us. Subscribe. The Veterans Impact Show. Uh, pardon what? Subscribe. Subscribe. Yeah. Join us. That's my beautiful wife. And I want to say a special thank you on Facebook to my wife, Diane, and to Nathaniel Smith. What a great team we've been able to put together. So we're about a minute out. And again, five seconds. Five seconds. All right. Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show. Thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Now, let's continue this conversation. Well, I am so thrilled to have Dr. Stephen Holt in my studio today, and we're talking about the VA healthcare system, the North Texas VA, which you are the director of, Dr. Holt, second largest in the nation. And you know, one of the things I believe that before too terribly long, because Texas is the second most populated state in the nation with veterans, we're about to become the first. And I think the influx with jobs, opportunities, 
that we've got for veterans. I wouldn't be surprised if your North Texas VA and your Vision 17 becomes the biggest in the nation. We're closing in on it fast. Yeah, you we are. Really are. All so. right, let's go back to continue the conversation that we were talking about of the PACT Act and the burn thing that you want to do basically hone in on. Yeah, so this is the largest expansion of health care for the VA in a long time. And I kind of point out, this has been a really exciting four or five years because the expansion in services and eligibility, starting with the 2018 Mission Act, uh, has really been phenomenal. And, and what's being offered to veterans, and we still want to do more, but what's being offered today since 2018 is incredible to what was offered before. And so back to the, the PAC Act real quick. It, one of the things it will do is extend the period of health care enhanced eligibility for post 9-11 combat veterans. Normally that's a year. This will extend it for another year um, for people to, to get health care through the VA at no cost to themselves. This also will be a, uh, a very aggressive outreach plan to contact affected veterans. But don't wait to be contacted. Please sign up uh, and get care. And I kind of emphasize something. There are now seven studies out that have been published in the last six years that show that VA care is as good as or better than what's available in the private sector. Oh, without a doubt. Without so, a doubt. You know, we may not always be as convenient because, again, we're a large system, we're a federal system, and it takes time to make changes. But the quality of care, which is monitored and published publicly, unlike many uh, for-profit health care systems, it, it's there. It's been proven over and over by independent studies. So the other thing I want to say about the uh, the burn pit is there's a series of conditions that you will be presumed to be related to burn pit exposures. And they bring these in tiers um, starting in uh, this year, and once it's, uh, it's um, signed into law. And those are basically rare cancers, uh, the, you know, the first year. The second year, it'll be some additional rare cancers and some additional um, Agent Orange locations will be included in 2024. Uh, lung diseases will be included, and it just keeps marching out till we get to uh, 2026, kidney cancer, melanoma, and then 2027, hypertension. And think about that. About a third of people have hypertension. Oh, without a doubt. And so, yeah, it's not hard to do that. I think one of the other things is a lot of times these things lead to things we don't even think about. Diabetes, you, you talked about cancer, no. other things which if you know you've got a possible problem, you can do something with the help of your doctor. Get on special diets, do special exercises. You can change your life and make the quality of life a lot better. Now, I bring that up because when I first met you, you said that you went to the VA and they changed your lifestyle and changed you. And you lost a tremendous amount of weight and you have really helped yourself. Yeah. and, I, and you know, I mean, basically, I say the VA saved my life. You know, I uh, have a, a, a rare um, disorder that puts you at severe risk of heart disease and early heart disease and then developed diabetes about a year and a half out after retiring. And had I not known these things and had to manage very aggressively, I probably wouldn't be here today. And I probably, if I were here today, I would not be able to do the kind of things I like to do, like long distance hiking and things, because I would have had a heart attack, probably a stroke. Um, and probably have kidney failure as well as vascular problems with my feet. But the VA looked at this, found it, and have treated me very aggressively. And so, you know, really being a doctor, knowing being a preventive medicine type of doctor, knowing these things, uh, you know, I was in seriously bad situation that you wouldn't know unless you were evaluated. That happens to a lot of people. I've had some of that myself. One of the other things I want to make a point is within the state of Texas, because we've got a large network in South Texas, if you want to sign up, you can go to their county veteran service officer. Also, their VA accredited reps with disabled American veterans, with the American Legion, with the VFW. There are people not only outside the VA, but inside the VA who can take you through the bureaucratic paperwork. And let's face it, anything to do with the government, because I deal with government loans, is paperwork out the wazoo. Yeah, so I want to tell you, really important, when you're following your VA claim, get together with a certified claims officer. All the VSOs have them, you bet. or the VA can steer you that. I made the mistake of doing my own claim, 
Because I'm, I'm a doctor and I'm smarter, right? <coughs> well, let me tell you, that was a mistake. Well, let's see. You you flew. You're a doctor. So you're a Superman. We'll be right back with Superman right after these words from all of our partners. I forgot to say, stay with us. <laughs> no, hey, stay, stay with us, folks. We're yeah. still here. <laughs> yeah, and we're having way too much fun. Um, I think it's important. I, I can't wait. Uh, we bought a new uh, Piper Comanche twin engine that my son's going to be working on. We've got the Bonanza. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to, you and I and Ashley are going to have to go someplace for lunch when you get a break. Got one it. day. $100 hand. <laughs> yeah. Gonna, <laughs> well, we, lo we love to go down to College Station. There's a restaurant there on the airport called Gate 12. Yeah. Or we go up to Ardmore. There's a great restaurant up there for lunch. Uh, we've gone to a lot. Of, there's a Heart 8 Barbecue in Stephenville. So we get a group of guys, and it looks like a flight of, of private planes going in. You know, <laughs> funny story. So when I was learning to fly T-37s at Randolph, there was a low-level route, and I was doing a low-level route, and you pop up over the dam, but down to College Station, we land, have lunch, you know. Mm -hmm. And as I, you know, doing the pop, I think Shandell, I can't remember anymore, almost hit a hawk or an eagle. Oh, wow. see it. I mean, it just, like, went by the, the screen. So, wow. you know. I, I, um, I got the chance to fly as flight crew in the TA-4, and one of our wingmen uh, on a low-level deal hit a hawk or a buzzard. Who messed up the constant speed drive? Messed up the engine. That was we basically got him back to Lemoore, and someday I'll tell the story about how we had to go visit Yosemite National Park to get back there, get under the, get under the, the weather. But I got to tell you, it happens. Cool. And and one of the things when you go up to North Texas Regional, where I go up and I do practice. Their ATIS comes on and says, now watch out for coyotes and, and buzzards in the air. What? And we see them all the time. See coyotes all over the airport and the runway. Yeah. You see buzzards in the air all the time. Up at Ardmore, up at Ardmore, there's a bunch of hills on the north end of the deal. And you'll see buzzards up there circling, you know, catching the thermals. And you're like, whoa, hitting a buzzard with a prop, not a good thing. Yeah. Hitting with anything. Yeah. I mean, you know, you suck one down the engine, you know, yeah. of a, you know, like a T-37. and <laughs> yeah. Talk about an underpowered aircraft. It was All one engine. It's really underpowered. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of our jet aircraft, <clears throat> they have the glide slope of a brick. Yeah, on a good day. <laughs> on a good day. When you, when, you lose, when you lose that. And that's great. So you got to fly. You were also an MD. You, how long were you in the Air Force? Uh, total time counting ROTC, 27 years in uniform, active duty part, uh, five years reserve, and then active duty was 20 years. Wow. So. And you, I tell you what, you've had one of the most phenomenal careers, and your reputation, I can say this, you are well known within the VA healthcare system of being a go in and help fix and improve, because you did that up in Chicago, I believe. Yep. And you've done it here. You've been a tremendous addition to the Dallas Fort Worth VA healthcare system. And now you're doing some additional work with Vision 17, which is state of Texas except for Houston. Yeah. I'll bet you Houston comes after you too. <laughs> well, I, I had my one of my mentors and bosses, Joe Dalpias, had an expression that it's always burned to me. And whenever I'd have an issue or something, he'd always say, answer it with what's best for the veteran. That's it. All right, we're going to be right back after these words uh, that we're finishing up. So thank you, Facebook, and thank you, YouTube, for staying with us. And thank you, Nathaniel and Diane and Dr. Holt, for being here. We'll be right back after we get this chance on our radio stations. We love having you in South Texas. Thank you for being part of the Veterans Impact Show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show. Thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Now, let's continue this conversation. Well, welcome back. I'm Jim Blythe, U.S. Navy veteran, and I'm having a great, great interview with a great man today. And I can say that because I know it. I've been associated with him and doing radio shows, and I know all about the North Texas VA. Dr. Stephen Holt, the director of the North Texas VA, second largest VA healthcare system in the United States, 40 counties that you take care of, 
you have a hundred and forty some odd thousand dollar I mean hundred and forty thousand patients, I'm sorry. Yep. And you have almost a billion dollar a budget, isn't that correct? Or is it now? One point seven. One point seven. Now you also opened the North Dallas area of the healthcare, the old Garland. It was a Baylor Scott and White. But here's the point I want to make, Doctor Hull. You're not just in the big hospital for the VA. You've got clinics. You've got uh, places to go throughout Division 17, throughout the state of Texas, throughout your deal. Tell it. Can you tell us just a little bit about the facilities? And I know they're in Fort Worth. They're up in Bonham. They're all over. What those are and how veteran can access those. Yeah, so our farthest east is Tyler, Texas, where we just opened up uh, about a year and a half ago a 55,000 square foot facility. And that's really large because we only had a 10,000 before out there. Then to the north, we have a uh, clinic in Sherman. We have uh, the Bonham facility up there, which is uh, not just clinic, but it's also uh, a nursing home and a um, um, domiciliary for long-term residential treatment of PTSD and, and other disorders. Then we have the Garland coming south of that. We have Garland, and then we have the Dallas main campus on the southeast side of Dallas. Going west, we have the Fort Worth outpatient clinic, which is uh, a quarter million square foot. Was the largest of its type in the VA, but you know Texas is competitive, so when they built Austin's <laughs> clinic, they made it a thousand square foot bigger. So we had number one and number two. Um, going north to Denton, we have a clinic in Denton, and then going west again, we have clinics in Decatur, Granbury, and Grand Prairie. So, you know, we have uh, these clinics all over. You know, the place I'm a little spotty is between here and Tyler. I'd like to have something in the middle there. But um, we pretty much are within a 30-minute drive of 96, 97% of our veterans. Um, now, you made a point to me the other day when we were talking that if a veteran has problems and they need dialysis, it's cheaper to do dialysis with the VA than it is to do it with your your private health care system. Yeah, so it's really important to understand the VA set of benefits is really quite good. And if you need dialysis, Medicare charges a $50 copay per treatment. You usually get three a week, and the VA has no copay. And so, and I don't, I've learned this from patients who to, yeah. told me. So, And the other thing you made a mention of we were talking about on Facebook the importance of going to the county veteran service officer if you're here in Texas or your VSOs. I know DAV, the Disabled American Veterans, the American Legion, and VFW all have registered reps. You don't, And you made the point, you tried to do the paperwork on your own. I tried to do the paperwork on my own. I went to James Henderson and got mine done. It's When you have a professional, they also have computer facilities that they have access everything they can pull things up they can pull up your military medical records and yeah. go through them and see what you missed yeah and also see how to phrase what you're claiming in a way that you know because a claim has several levels of of disability and you want to shoot to the appropriate level which usually is higher than what we think um, so that's why you, these people do this for a living and they're very good at it oh no kidding um, matter of fact Many times I have had people, I had a lady call me from Richmond, Virginia, and I called James Henderson, and I said, James, how do I connect with somebody in Richmond? And he said, I'll be back with you. In about an hour, he calls me, he says, okay, call this person in Richmond. They're with the DAV. They're a VA-accredited rep. They got their benefits. Now, this was for a World War II veteran to get the VA agent attendance pension, which was about $2,300 a month added to what they had to pay for home health care. Yeah, and, and that, they, that home health care and, and aid and assistance is really critical. There's been a little controversy about the program, you know, in terms of enrollment in the VA. It's not disenrolling anybody as they look at it. Some people we enrolled, we probably shouldn't have is the issue. But right now we're not disenrolling anybody for at least a year as we look at that and go through those and try and get more people qualified. And remember your health changes. So if you put your claim in at age 45 and you got, say, 50%, okay, at age 60, you may have deteriorated to a point where that might push you from 70 to 90%, for instance, or from 50 to, to 90%. I ran into a guy when I was walking in my neighborhood, 
trails, former Army guy served in Vietnam, and just, you know, struck a former ranger, talking conversation. And basically, he was 50%, and I started talking to him, and I says, you know, when did you do your claim? Well, I did it like 20 years ago. I said, have you ever filed an update? Well, no. I said, well, listen, let me put you in touch with somebody. Do this update. Well, he comes back 90%. Oh, yeah. So, you know. And here's something people don't know that they need to know. Number one, the percentage of your disability claim also can be given to the county tax authorities for your ad valorem real estate tax. So you could end up, if you have a 100% disability, you have a 90% disability, you have a 20% disability. For seniors, what I run into a lot, and if I've had this conversation once, I've had it 100 times, I'm talking with a veteran, and I'm shouting. I'm having to use my outdoor voice. And basically, I say, okay, where were you and what did you do? And I, inevitably, they were artillery commanders. They worked the flight deck where I did, and they have tremendous hearing loss. Go to the VA. What is that for free? Go to the VA. So you get signed up with a county veteran service officer. You get, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, about $6,000 worth of hearing aid equipment for free? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus a disability? Yeah. And I've never seen anybody get less than a 20% disability. 50%? You get glasses. Get really? an exam every two years and a set of glasses every two years. Yeah. So, um, and you know, glasses are expensive. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I, about every two years, I get a new set of glasses, and you're talking about over a thousand dollars because I have to have prescription for sunglasses and for these, but I have to have trifocals because I fly a plane. So you want to be able to see the thing up close, you want to be able to see far away, and you want to be able to see the, your cockpit, and uh, those aren't cheap. No, no. And so an interesting thing: so if you sign up for care, and depending on what category you are in. Um, well, actually, if you're, doesn't matter the category, you can go to an urgent care, and the worst you will have to spend is a $30 copay, which the VA bills, not the urgent care, if they're in network. And you go to access to care to find out if they're in network. Or if you show up and they start wanting your payment information, then they're not in network. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Litmus test. But if you're in categories one through five for eligibility, you get three visits per calendar year with no copay, and then after that, it's thirty dollars per visit for that calendar year. And for category six and seven, it's thirty dollar copay. Some six are included, but I won't bore you those details. So that's an incredible benefit that you can get seen, and it's better than going to an ER. And I want to emphasize that because oh, yeah. often you can make an appointment and you walk out with your prescriptions, which are all covered with this VA benefit. Okay, and if you need a quick follow up, that can be arranged too. Um, with the ER, I just saw a court decision that says if you have health insurance, the VA cannot cover your deductibles and copays and other costs associated with that ER visit. So while we do cover your ER visit, if you have no insurance, you know we cannot be the first payer. We cannot be the, the we're always the second payer by law. So, and, and you say, well, I just won't tell them I have insurance. Well, they have a database. They know who they has know. They're they going know. to check it. So um, it's really important to consider using an urgent care if you're not having an immediate life-threatening, you know, chest pain. I cannot breathe at all. You know, I've cut myself and I'm bleeding profusely. You know, go to an urgent care that's in that work. It will save you a lot of money, a lot of hassle, and you'll be seen most times quicker. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Um, that is an important thing, and so there, there are these facilities all over. Just go in, I guess, um, contact your local VA, and they'll be able to tell you. So you don't have to go to the big hospital. You can go to one of these other facilities. And if you're taking – the other thing, if you just left the military, you're eligible, uh, depending on your category, for up to a year or more of VA coverage. Take advantage of that because say you're in college, right, and you cut your hand, and you got to go to the ER and you need stitches. It could be done yeah. in urgent care. You're not get you're not getting covered for any of that unless you're in, you know enrolled for healthcare in the VA. So even though you don't plan to use the VA as your primary, if you don't have health insurance and stuff, get enrolled and use that eligibility. It's like having your own health insurance policy if you need to go to an urgent care or an ER. And the other thing is, if you sign up for VA eligibility, it does not impact anything else. Correct. So that's important. Okay, we've focused in on that. Let's go back one quick thing because people come in and out. Again, if you want to sign up for the VA, 
go to, in Texas, your county veteran service officer. Every county that's got a large population has it. If you don't have it, if you're in other states, go to your VSO, VFW, American Legion, Disabled American Veterans. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so let me, let me correct that slightly. You can actually sign up online for health care. Now, your claim, your disability claim, you want to go to these certified. Yeah. Um, and the, the other thing, boy, the mind is terrible when it's like gone. <laughs> you triggered a thought. But anyway, you can sign up online. You can come in. It's called a, a 1010 Easy Form, I think. Mm -hmm. It's online to sign up for your eligibility. They'll pull your DD-214 if you don't have a copy. There's a database you can pull it. And uh, it's even if you're young, again, sign up for the health care. Here's another thing. we You guys instituted, I think, three or four years ago, telehealth. Yes. Okay. So basically with a cell phone like this uh, or especially one like Diane has that's an, an Apple deal you can do a whole lot you can go and they can take a look at you pink eye you know there's certain characteristics of pink eye that you can tell the other thing you were mentioning to us if you have one of those smart watches or even a cell the Apple uh, cell phone you can do your blood oxygen level you can do your heart rate you can sit there with someone and be able to give them some of the information they need, and they can tell real quick, oh, you're going to need to do this, or we can get you a prescription for that. You basically have a doctor sitting about this far away. Yeah. So we got very lucky the VA put a, a push on telehealth and virtual care just before COVID. So we were well positioned, and nobody saw COVID coming. We just happened to have great timing. You know, yeah. sometimes you get a break, right? <laughs> About one in four of our visits currently is a telehealth or virtual care appointment. And we even have emergency medicine telehealth at the Dallas VA. And why is that important? Because let's say, you know, you want, you need an appointment for a 20 or 30 minute appointment for your health with your provider. It can be done virtually. You can go out to your car, sit down and do the appointment and not miss any significant amount of work having to drive to a hard facility. For the ER, same thing. We can evaluate you over the phone or via video and see if we can treat you now, right now, not have to come to the ER, or do you need to go to the ER based on your condition? And I'm looking into right now how to expand that across the entire state of Texas based on a function in my temporary assignment over at the network. So it's really important for convenience, speed, and not having an impact either on your school or your work or whatever, that you can get the, f the first level often, very often, like 80% of the time, the definitive care done just by doing that and not having to to come in, spend the time to drive to the facility, wait, be seen, et cetera. And here's, here's one of the things. For my retired, because I work with retirees in what I do, a lot of them say to me, I don't have a computer. I don't, I don't use the Apple. You got a kid that does. Yeah. You got a next door neighbor that does. You've got a family member that does. Um, my wife, I have the regular uh, Samsung uh, Android. My wife has Apple. If there's there's a big difference between the two, we've got both systems available to us. You can access this anywhere, 24/7. Yeah. And it, the, here's one of the other things: if something happens and you're traveling, let's say that you're up in Colorado, and you have a problem. You can go where you got cell service, and you can get a doctor right then and there. Yeah, yeah, or within, say, an hour, depending on, you yeah. know, but you get the set up. And all you have to do is uh, we have several ways to do it. We prefer to do it with the VA Connect app because it's secure. It can't be hacked. Well, it's very hard to hack into. Yeah. And so that ensures your your privacy and that, that connection through VA uh, Video Connect, which is downloadable to your phone, your tablet, your computer, your car, if you have a Tesla, <laughs> you know, for instance, um, and, and really urge you to do that. The other thing I urge you to do is get a My Healthy Vet account, which is free, because all your health information is there. You can download it, carry it on a, a thumb drive. You can see what your medicines, you can see what your labs, your x-rays, all that. So if you end up in an ER someplace and you say, well, I had this, I don't remember what it says, you can pull it up and the doctor can actually see what it was. Oh, wow. I think that's important. All right. We're going to take another break, our last break, for words from our sponsors, people who really help us. 
I want to say again, thank you to Nathaniel. Thank you to Diane. And sorry, Chuck Wright, you couldn't be here. I think you're going to a great deal down in San Antonio. This is the Veterans Impact Show. We have a lot more coming, but we're going to have to really condense it. So stick around, pay attention. Facebook, thank you for staying with us. YouTube, thank you, thank you for staying with us. And thank you, South Texas, for being with us. One, Dr. Holt, uh, Diane and I went to the National uh, Navy League convention, and she came down with COVID first, and then I came down with COVID. And we didn't know. That's what and we was. didn't know. I thought it was just and so now one of the things is we have the test kits, and I I double checked myself. I was going to go get a haircut, and I thought, man, I just need I, I need to be that close of proximity. I did the test last Thursday. Negative. Negative. No problem. But I got to tell you, having the telehealth, having test kits, having this, having that, you can take care of yourself. Yeah, no, you actually can. And medicine has um, evolved so much, and COVID was really an instigator of this in, in many ways, obviously. And, and uh, <laughs> I just got the signal. Stay closer to the mic, will you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but medicine has evolved, and it's getting more convenient to get the care you need faster. Okay, and, and I can't emphasize that enough. Now, I know for we older folks, we're not as comfortable with this as the younger folks, but. Um, I mean, I still have a hard time with the kiosk at the airport. I'd rather just have somebody check my bags and take care of it for me. But it's really getting convenient. It's really getting to be easy to get the services you need and get them timely. And, and I can't emphasize that enough. Um, the, uh, my healthy vet, mm -hmm. is that, I'm sorry I lost lost you as you were talking about that. Is that a website? That's a website. And you can you can ask for appointments. You can see all your medical records, what, you know, the doctor's notes, all your lab, radiology reports. You can refill your pharmacy. Instead of calling and punching in a number, uh -huh. the old system, you just go in and click this medicine, this medicine, this medicine, submit. And those refills are being processed. Okay, so what's the website? My Health E Vet, I believe it is. You have to look it up, but I think it's M Y H E A L T H E V E T. Okay. Diane's uh, typing this in for Facebook and YouTube audience. I think this is incredible the advances that are made and what we're doing to help people. Now, you're also do you RVA also does a lot of work to try and help not only the disabled veteran, the uh, I think we talked about the aid in attendance. But I know you guys do a lot of work trying to locate and help homeless veterans. That's a huge thing within the VA. Yeah, and the secretary has set a goal of a 25% reduction in homelessness by the end of this fiscal, uh, calendar year. Okay, and, and my facility is one of the top 10, so we have a much bigger, because we'll carry, like, the top 10 will carry two-thirds of that goal reduction. So my facility is one of the top 10 in, in placements. For Facebook, we just pulled up VA My Healthy Vet. Take a look at it. Yeah. All of this is available to you, and I think this is incredible for you to know about, and you can get signed up for this. And messaging. You don't have to wait on the phone, talk to somebody who's then going to type it in and pass it on. You can put your message directly to your primary care provider and some specialty care. Not every specialty care is on it, but some specialty care and mental health is on it as well. So it's a really great thing. All right. We're going to be back on our radio in just a second. I want to say thank you for being part of this. Subscribe to us. Share. Get the word out. We're here to help veterans. We're here to save lives. And I'm working with a guy who has really dedicated his life to doing that for veterans, Dr. Stephen Holt. We'll be right back after these words. Did I get the website right? No, there's no E in there. It says myhealth.com. They've, cha they've changed. <laughs> Welcome back to the Veterans Impact Show. Thanks to our great sponsors, Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and the Texas Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Now, let's continue this conversation. Dr. Holt, this has been a great opportunity to tell people. So let's go over real quick. We talked about the PAC Act. We talked about the burn pit registry. We talked about the importance of getting signed up and how to make it easy. We talked about all of the things in the, the relationships that the VA has with major medical universities and centers. We talked about how they can access telehealth. That is so important. 
and the partnerships that the VA has created and how you're growing and what you're doing. What's next for you, Dr. Holt? Well, don't know. Um, you got to, you know, the VA always has surprises for you, so, you know. It's like the military. Well, you yeah. know, you never know where you're going to be assigned next. I think it's also your career. We were talking about that in the Air Force. You've had a fabulous career. 20 some odd years, I believe you said, you got yep. to fly. Mm -hmm. Were you, you were pilot? You no, I wasn't a pilot, flight surgeon. Flight surgeon. So. Okay. Wow. And you had, so you did medical preventative medicine with the VA, I mean, with the Air Force yep. for many years. And then you've been in the VA and you were assistant director here in Dallas a number of years ago, weren't you? Yeah, actually the, the deputy chief of staff, the number two doc uh, for five years. Dallas is the longest job I've ever held. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. All right. If you if you'd like to go to our Facebook Live video, Diane's putting all these details and comments in there. If you're listening to us on radio, go to Facebook, go to the YouTube. You're going to be able to see it. If you want to find out and you don't know, just contact us. Uh, our information is on Facebook. I'll take an email. I'll take a phone call. I'll take a chance to go have a cup of coffee with you. And next time I'm in Jacksonville, Joe, we're taking you to lunch. I got to tell you, this is great. You've had such a long, distinguished, committed career to helping people out. What would you say to a young man or woman who's in high school, in college, trying to figure out what they're going to do? What would you say to them about your military career and being in the military? Yeah, so I was incredibly fortunate. The military did so much and gave me so many opportunities I would have never had in the private sector at a young age and got to learn and do things and make a difference. And I think, you know, I spend a lot of time, particularly at your and my age now, um, looking at what makes for a good life and what, what lets one go into those latter years happy and fulfilled. And one of the key things that comes out across many religions and many of these people have done studies it's the service you've given to others. What have you given back? What have you done? How have you made things better? And, and so my advice to a young person is the military is a great start. It's a great culture. I think there's none, none other like it in terms of integrity, doing the right thing, standing up for morals, principles, values, including the Constitution. And you will ne you, you'll come out of it with preparation that the people the same age as you will not have in the private sector. And that's why many of our military folks are so sought after competitively by industry. And you'll have a chance to make a difference. So I, I can't emphasize enough that opportunity. If you're like me, you'll continue to, to want to work. You know, my, my thing was taking care of my colleagues in arms. And I've been fortunate enough to do that all except for about 18 months of my adult life and I was out in the private sector before I came back to federal service. So. I think that's incredible. Also, you're going to learn leadership. You're going to learn technical skills. Not everybody carries a rifle. There are so many wonderful things that they're doing with technical things right now. There's so many jobs. Only about 15% of the people or 10% are actually involved in forward operations combat. There's so much logistics. And these jobs relate and can be done different things for a civilian world. So, Dr. Holt, I like to close with a quick prayer. So let's say, dear Lord, we thank you so much for your guidance and direction and your hedge of protection around all of our active duty military first responders, EMS, and we thank you for taking care of them. We thank you for their service, and we thank you for taking care of our veterans. Thank you, God, for being in this great, great country and being part of a great, great military and an opportunity to serve. We thank you for the many, many things you have done for us. This I pray and say thank you, our greatest God. Amen. Well, thank you, Dr. Holt. We have had a great, great morning. i got to tell you, we need to do this fairly often, maybe have a roundtable discussion. Because I think there's a lot of other things people don't know about. What Dr. Hastings has done. Yeah. What other doctors have done. So let's come back again and let everybody know. The VA is a place to go if you're a veteran. Thank you again. This is the Veterans Impact Show. Share us, like us, and subscribe to us. This is Jim Blythe saying, 
See you next week on the Veterans Impact Show.